Hey guys, Game Alpha Gray here. And you are watching Captain Algebra. Dig it! Hey everybody, Captain Algebra here. Well, it's the beginning of April, which means that another Midwest gaming classic has come and passed, and it was another fantastic weekend as usual. Now, last couple years when it comes to conventions, I've kind of gotten away from the whole taking pictures and taking footage just because I want to be there in the moment. I want to just be there spending time with friends, hanging out, and making those memories. That's what's most important to me. And so no pictures or anything like that, but hung out with a ton of good friends. Um, I got to see Back in the Day Gamer, which is awesome because he wasn't there last year. Mega Dan, Freak of Four, The Game Beaters, uh, Dan Brosman, Mega Matt and TJ Kitsune, Gaming Off the Grid was there with Brian Newland and uh, Dan Mia Hurricanes. Um, saw the guys from uh, Bit Wars. Uh, John Riggs was there. John Hancock was there. Um, I know I'm going to forget people, which sucks. Um, but John Aguilera, the Video Games Monthly guys. So many um, cool people, and it was just a blast. So I got there Friday, uh, probably about early afternoon, one o'clock, and hung out with Video Games Monthly for a while, and then uh, kind of had some beer and uh, waited for other people to get there. And then Gaming Off The Grid showed up, and we were uh, sharing a hotel room, and so let them in the room, and then we all kind of hung out, and then we went to the PBR district. Uh, there's a place called On Tap there. That's a restaurant we like to go to every single year. And then we went to the Up Down, played some games. I always try to beat one arcade game um, every convention I go to. And so this time we actually played the X Men arcade game, the six player. Now Colossus wasn't working, so it was just five of us, but it was so much fun. Really, really cool game. I'm glad I finally experienced that because it's such a cool cabinet. And uh, it was awesome. Then went back to the room, Mega Dan finally got in, and uh, we just hung out, had a little uh, drinks, and played some NFL Blitz. I was uh, doing really well until I played Mega Dan. I just can't seem to beat him. No matter what happens, when I play Mega Dan in that game, I'll be winning, and some bullshit will happen. Like, you'll get a forced fumble or something. It's ridiculous. This time, I was up with like 30 seconds to go, and I gave up a touchdown. So it's more my fault. You know, nothing screwy happened, but it's like, man, why can't I beat Dan? Uh, but the next day was Midwest and won around. Didn't really have any plans to buy any certain games. You know, I was obviously looking for Genesis stuff, but I was also looking for a couple other games that I wanted um, that just didn't happen to be on Genesis. If I saw them, I'd grab them. I don't think I saw either one of them, unfortunately. Um, well, one I did, but none of them were in that great a condition. One Genesis game I really did want was Robocop vs. Terminator. Uh, I only saw one copy, but it was a little more expensive than I wanted to. So it's kind of weird. It seemed like some booths were really expensive, and other booths were really underpriced. So it just, you know, you kind of had to find those deals, as well as be willing to haggle a little bit. But So I didn't get a lot this year. I actually went with quantity over quality. And uh, so we will go ahead and check that stuff out right now. So first we're going to talk about a Game Boy game I got, and that was... Balloon Kid. So I'm a big fan of Balloon Fight on the NES, and this was a sequel to it, but it's more like, um, I guess, a platformer, you could say, but you're obviously floating around on your balloons, and it always looked really cool, so I grabbed it. And uh, let me say, I'm enjoying it, but man, does this game get frustrating. It's only 10 levels, and the first half of the game is not bad, but then when you get to, like, level 7, um, just the enemy placement and stuff, and, like, the tight passageways you have to go through with spikes on the ceilings and stuff all while like the controls aren't that great you know controls like balloon fight and it gets super frustrating so i haven't been able to beat it yet but hopefully i'll do that soon i think first i've got is level eight and uh so we're getting there it's fun but man it gets frustrating towards the end but i'm still glad i picked it up because i do love game boy games and it is a good game boy game um I believe i got that one for 15 bucks and so it wasn't bad on there uh, next was an NES game. This was actually a gift from Megadan29. And uh, we were just talking. I was looking through some NES games with him. And I was like, God, what's that game on the NES that is about like roller skating? I always think it's like rollerball, but it's not. That's like a pinball game. And then he told me. I was like, oh, yeah. So I'll look for it. Next time I saw him, he comes up, gives it to me. He goes, Here's go. Here, yeah, here you go. So thanks, Dan. I really appreciate it. That was awesome. But it is roller games on the NES. So this is by Ultra, um, a.k.a. Konami. And yeah, it's like you're a part of... 
a roller derby team, but you're going through the streets and like beating people up and stuff. So it's really cool. It's got that good Konami Ultra soundtrack and it's fun. And I've always wanted it. I just keep forgetting to look for it at conventions. So it was super cool of Dan to pick that up for me. Um, that was awesome, man. I really appreciate it. All right, now into the Genesis stuff. Uh, so we got two that are not new. They're just complete now. First one I got from Gaming Off The Grid uh, the night before we were talking, let's see if what he had Genesis they had, and they mentioned one of the games. I was like, hey, I need that complete. So he put it aside for me because vendors obviously got to go in there first. And uh, that is General Chaos. So super cool of Wes to hold this for me. This is a really fun game. It's really short, but it's hilarious where you just um, try to take over a map almost like Risk style. Um, but you get to pick which type of um, battalion you have, whether you want like an assault or more heavy or more medical focused. And it's really fun. So I played it you know, a couple years ago on stream and it, it's good. But yeah, he had it, I think, marked at 35, gave it to me for 20, so great deal. And what's crazy is I was going around other, you know, the hall and every other place I saw it had for 60 bucks. It's crazy. I have no idea because you look it up, it's only about a $35, $40 game. You know, Wes had it priced very reasonable. So I'm not sure why um, all these other vendors had it so expensive. But like I said earlier, like some places were really expensive. Other places were really underpriced. It just depended on what you found. And uh, so, yeah, if you ever go to a convention where Gaming Up the Grid is selling stuff, definitely check their table out. They are always selling stuff very reasonable. They're never, never trying to price gouge you. Uh, they're great guys. And the next one, I had the game and I actually found this just box and manual for very reasonable. So I grabbed it and that is WrestleMania, the arcade game. I've been wanting this complete for a very long time because I love WrestleMania, the arcade game. I grew up with the PlayStation version and the Super Nintendo version. And so I've always wanted this complete and I just never found it in good condition. So when I saw it, just box and manual for cheap, I was like, yep, we'll complete that. So that was really exciting. All right, and now I only added four new Genesis games to my collection. Like I said, I was going more for quality over quantity. And honestly, when I was going around, there wasn't a ton of Genesis stuff. And typically, most of the places had stuff I already had, which is really weird to think about. You know, I'm still, um, like, what am I, 200? you know, over 250 away from the collection, the complete set. And I'm still like, there's places I go and I don't find things I need, which is really weird. Uh, but yeah, so first one I got was Demolition Man. And so this was, I believe I got it for like 50, um, which is still under value. But um, it's a game I always forget about. I saw it once at a thrift store in Eau Claire, but the label was severely damaged, so I didn't grab it. And uh, Dan and I were talking and he's like, oh yeah, I really want Demolition Man. So it was kind of in the in the back of my head and then I saw it for reasonably priced. So I grabbed it. And so this is a side-scrolling as well as a top-down game where you obviously play as um, John Spartan, who was played by, yeah, what's his name? Um, Sylvester Stallone and going after um, Wesley Snipes in the future. And so it starts off with side-scrolling. You've got guns, you can shoot at people. And then the next level is kind of like a, a top-down, almost it plays a lot like True Lies. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it is that the enemies keep respawning, so it's really easy to lose health. But still seems like a pretty cool game, which you never know with a claim. Some of their stuff wasn't great, so but very glad to add that to the collection. Next up was Blades of Vengeance. So this is a game I've been wanting for years, but it was always very pricey. I feel like I always see it 140, 150 bucks at conventions. And uh, so I was going around, saw it for 95. I'm like, okay, it's gotta be missing a man or missing a manual or bad condition or something. Open up, everything's in there. Now the manual is black and white, so I didn't know if that was just like a reproduction manual or someone copied it, whatever. So I quickly looked it up online and nope, all the manuals are like that. So I was like, shit, this is legit. So 95 bucks, yeah, I was not passing on that. So this is pretty cool. It's like a side scroller. But it's like um, Golden Axe. You've got three characters, a female, a male, uh, or two males. And, um, but yeah, they almost, they look a lot like the characters from Golden Axe. And uh, so it's fun. It's side scrolling. You go through different parts of levels. You can get different potions as you kill enemies. Some, uh, one's a blast that kills all the enemies on screen. You can get inv invisibility. You can get force field that protects you. You can get healing items. And you can also get money. Uh, silver and then after every level you get to buy potions if you want with your silver uh, So I've only played through the first stage looks like there's uh, eight 
uh, eight stages on here. So it seems pretty cool. Again, I've always wanted it and to find it for that price, I was very happy. Next game was actually a bundle with the last game. Um, and I grabbed this because I wanted to make the other price go down a little bit. And then as well as I, when I saw this for the price they were asking, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna grab it. Cause this game I usually see for well over $200. And this was well under $200 when I saw it. And that is The Death and Return of Superman. And so this is a beat em up that, uh, by Sunsoft that always looked pretty cool. And uh, I love the comic of Death and Return of Superman. I always thought it was a really cool um, premise and stuff. And uh, so to get this, I was really, really pumped. So I think you get to play with the Cyborg, the Eradicator, the Man of Steel, and Superboy, as well as just regular Superman, I think. And uh, obviously you're going after Doomsday and stuff. So far, it seems like a pretty average beat-em-up. Nothing too great. Don't have a huge move set. Enemies are pretty uh, lackluster. So far, the only two bosses I've fought have been pushovers. Super easy to fight, but it's still, it's a cool game. Unfortunately, it's one of those one-player beat-em-ups, which kind of sucks, you know? If when it's a beat-em-up, you'd rather it be co-op, but it's still cool to have in the collection, especially for the price I got it for. And now for the last game I picked up and was not expecting to buy this game when I went there. It wasn't even on my radar. Um, I mean, if I saw it, it'd be kind of cool, but um, it's usually pretty pricey. And this this was what it goes for. Um, I would say probably because I bundled it with Death and Return of Superman, I would consider that I got it for under what it goes for. So I don't think I paid what any of these go for. I think I got a deal on everything, which is awesome. Um, but I saw it kind of halfway through the convention on my on, on that Saturday, and I asked to look at it, see the, the condition and stuff, and it was good. It was, it's missing something, but it's not something that I care about. And uh, the whole time I was like, maybe I should just get it. There's nothing really else that I'm seeing. It's only probably gonna go up in value. I'm, maybe I should just grab it. And so I kept thinking, I kept thinking, and then, you know, I would be talking to, you gave me off the grid, and Megan Ann and, and Tony, and uh, they're all like, yeah, man, you should do it. That It was honestly Tony's the one who really got me to do it. He's like, dude, just do it. You know, there's been times where I've I've said that and I went back and it's gone. Same thing with Brosman, he was telling me that. And uh, so finally went to lunch. I was like, okay, Bro Brosman and I went to lunch. I'm like, hey, if it's, if it's there after we eat, then I'll grab it. Left, it was still there, came back, sure enough, it's still there. I'm like, all right. So I went to go get um, the rest of the money I needed for it and uh, offered a deal for this and Death and Return of Superman. They took it. And so now I'm the proud owner of another Holy Grail in the second Genesis, the Punisher. That's right, we finally got the Punisher on the Sega Genesis, a really clean copy. There's a little bit of label like um, coming up a little bit on the top, but that's nothing a little glue can't fix. But it's even got the Capcom case. And yeah, this is just one of those beat em ups that before I started going for a complete set, I never thought I would get. I was like, it's just, it's too expensive. Even when I was collecting, you started collecting, you know, a few years ago, it was still, you know, complete in box, $200 game. And I was just like, I'm never gonna get it. But I figured it was finally time. Like I said, the deal I got with this and Death of, Death of Return of Superman, I mean, Death of Return of Superman was already probably 40, 50 bucks under value and it's in great condition. And when I bundled these up together, I asked for another $30 off and they gave it to me. So the, the price I got these for, I couldn't turn it down. Um, I knew that was gonna be the end of it. I wasn't gonna buy anything else. I ended up buying a couple Yoshi plushies for my kids, but that was it. Um, but I, it's just cool to have in the collection. It's a fun beat em up. I actually beat this on the arcade at Up Down last year with Robert from Gaming Off The Grid. So it's cool now to have the Genesis version. Obviously, I think the arcade version is better, but it, this is still pretty fun. And it's cool that this is still two player. So maybe Megan Ann and I could uh, play through it sometime. But yeah, it's just, it's cool to have this in the collection and uh, another heavy hitter off the list. Obviously, there's still plenty heavy hitters out there. You know, Musha and Sparkster and, and that stuff, uh, Splatterhouse 2, but uh, we'll get to that, you know, but it's kind of funny. Last two MGCs, I got two Holy Grails. First, we got Crusader of Senti last year, and now we got Punisher this year. So who knows? Maybe that's going to be a thing, right? Every MGC, I grab one heavy hitter and... Uh, We'll see, maybe maybe not at MoGameCon. Maybe I should just go for more quantity there. But yeah, so that puts me at, I believe, 432 Genesis games. So pretty pumped for that. Um, again, I expected to grab more while I was there, but when you buy the Punisher, you know, you're not gonna buy too much else. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's just cool to add to the collection. So 
but yeah, like I said, it was so fun. MGC is always good. That Saturday night, pretty much, yeah, I bought all the stuff on Saturday. You know, we went, we had a big dinner with uh, Chris Pico, um, the old ass retro gamer, Church, the game grinder, um, and then Canadian Retro and Retro, retro Pixel from um, the Cartridge Club were there. Rocket Sauce was there. So it was fun to meet Canadian Retro and Retro Pixel. And we had a big dinner um, at Third Street Tavern. We couldn't all sit together, but it was cool. Just enjoyed, uh, enjoyed our time. And then we went back, drank a little bit more, played some video games. And yeah, next morning, I only stayed for a little bit, you know, a couple hours before I had to get going. Just kind of walked around, bought the plushies for the girls. And then said goodbye, goodbyes, and uh, another MGC was in the books. So it was another great year. I look forward to every year. And uh, it's just one of the best conventions. Um, it's my favorite, obviously. It's my hometown one. You know, it's very close to where I live. And uh, it's my home base. So I go there every year, and I love seeing all the people and hanging out. But... So the only other convention I'll be going to this year is MoGameCon at the end of July in Missouri. So if you're going to be there, it'd be awesome to see you. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a good time. So if I forgot anybody, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like I said, there's tons of people there. Uh, Jay from Square Pegs met him finally. So yeah, so many people. It's just it's hard to keep track. So maybe I should start taking pictures again. But uh, uh, just it was a good time all around so good to add some genesis games but the best part is just hanging out with friends and seeing everybody that you know you barely see throughout the year but thanks for watching everybody till next time this is cabin algebra signing off <laughs>